so much in here. Ooh. a lot of veg and fruit. Spiced squash buns. That's what the recipe is. Hello. I know I've not done this for a while, but I thought I'd give you a little update of what's been going on So. I think many of you knew or know that I had a bit of a operation done here, but that's kind of good now. So yeah, I didn't have another vlog for a while, but I wanted to start this one by showing this. This is something I went to last night, which is gala dinner. Some great sponsors involved with it. And basically, I don't know how easy it is to do. They were just like raffling off things from really you know, incredible prizes. There's like rides with Sean Kelly, um, signed jerseys, tons of stuff. And it's all to raise money for Action, Action Medical Research for Children, which basically fund medical research, which basically they fundraise uh, medical research for all kinds of rare and quite unique diseases. Um, there was a young lady who spoke about how she was having epileptic fits like four or five times a day, and they helped fund the research to be able to do the surgery to effectively save her life. Lots of money was raised, lots of food, and yeah, go and check this out. And thank you to Lucky Saint, who are the beer sponsors, for inviting me along as well. Anyway, now the rest of the day, I'm not in cycling kit, as you can see. Um, I sound like I've got a bit of a cold still, so I probably do. Um, so for the rest of the day, I'm currently in a little hotel room. As you can see, uh, in Vauxhall, and I'm heading over to Gun Control, the paint studio, to pick up two very special frames that we've been working on for a while. And I thought I was gonna do this video about them. So yeah, see you later on. Are they good? Yeah. Oh, I haven't had one yet. Look. That's pretty special. But then the thing that behind it is probably even more special, isn't it? <laughs> one would hope so. Yeah. One would hope so. So this is Sammy. Sammy's a very, very clever paint man who we've done. How many bikes have we done together now? It's got to be 10. If you go back to Windy Miller. It's got to, be, got to be getting on. Might be more. No, it can't be more. So there's one of them. <laughs> that's that's the Australia bike. So the Australia leather purple. Yeah. And the other purple. Chrome. Chrome. Two uh, two charity bikes. Two charity, yeah. Has there been another one other than that? These two. Yes, Let's see. Ten. So there's, um, it's got to be about 10. I've, I've also got news I've got the other raffle bike in the back of the car. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna, so briefly about what this one is. So this is an original soloist. And what we've done is we basically took one of the original frames and I'll put a photo of what it looks like. And we've uh, done a modern interpretation of that frame and that paint scheme, which was like a, this color. Yeah. Kind of this color. It's being generous. It's, yeah, it's post box red. So we've done like a modern interpretation and we're gonna build it up with a new mechanical group set. Sammy's done a matching stem, which is over there. Massive pile of stems. Very, 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 very okay. it's just beautiful, isn't it? Done it all. So we've got that stem, that's gonna be built up as a modern uh, build on the original soloist, um, kind of to celebrate the release of the, the new one. This one, it says 95 on it, but I think this is actually one from 2006 or 2007, but the first one came out in 1995. So this was the first aero road bike that, this this actually was the first carbon aero road bike, and they made an, an aluminium soloist, which kind of relates to a bit more what that is. 
that one is effectively the predecessor to the soloist. Is it really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. But it's a track version of it. Yeah, yeah. But you basically came up with, uh, we, we turned around and basically said, let's just, we had a couple of ideas of what to do with the T1, the track bike. And then I think we just went down the route of going, what do you want to do? Yeah, sure. I mean, we could talk about some of the ideas you did have. Um, we spoke about colour changing paint, didn't we? Yeah. Colour changing paint, which we trialled. There were some pigments that are used in nail polishes. Yeah. And food decoration, um, which is just a dry raw pigment that we tried to synthesise into paint. Done some tests, which worked really, really effectively. Went outside, it completely changes really, really quickly. Bring it back inside, changes back. Would have been great. The problem is, as soon as we put our 2K clear coat over the top, it's got yep. UV inhibitors in, so yeah. it won't work. Yeah, yeah. So it would purely be a case of if we were to paint in that, how would you then layer it up with logos on top? You couldn't protect it. You couldn't put a clear coat over the top. Mm. Um, so yeah, that idea. I'm not going to say it's completely done with, but for the right time now, it was out. right now we haven't figured a solution to solve it. Yeah, which is yeah. fine. Yeah, maybe we'll find some old lacquer from the 90s and it doesn't have UV inhibitors. Wait, <laughs> there's going to be some around there, right? Yeah. I turned around to you and I was like, what do you want to do with it? And I said, as long as it's not red. I think it's, yeah, that was the only thing I said. Red, as long as it's not red. Well, I'd had some ideas on a new way of applying gold leaf. So we do loads of gold leaf and there's a real traditional way of putting it on. Um, and I wanted to try a glass gilding um, trick. It's called water gilding, which is how old sign writers used to do and still do uh, panes of glass. So if you in London, nice houses, you've got the number, house number. So yeah, it's yeah. very chromey looking gold. That's done with water uh, or a water mix. And what happens is you are allowed to then float the, float the gold leaf on top of the glass. The water dries out and it stretches the gold leaf on, which is a slightly different way of applying it where we would normally put a glue down and the glue glue goes down, leaf sticks to glue, and then you're effectively trapping the glue underneath the leaf. It can sometimes tarnish if it's not done right, um, and it doesn't often lend itself to going into these intricate shapes. So we just wanted to try a new way of putting leaf down. So it's a bit of an experiment, crisp and a bit of a guinea pig, but I think it's worked out. And then we decided to try and put a, uh, a marble candy effect over the top, which I think is, again, I think it's worked out pretty cool. So do you do the gold leaf, You pre obviously you strip the frame, you prep the frame, do you then do the gold leaf and then do the... Absolutely, yeah. So to, so to allow the gold leaf to sit nice and flat, we wanted a nice flat surface for it to go over, which is obviously the same for any paint job. But for this, we had to, we couldn't quite decide how we were gonna work it. Um, the way it's done, the gold leaf has gone on first. So actually, if you were to scratch away all the paint that's on there, you'd find that that frame is mostly gold leaf at the, <laughs> at the front. <laughs> which was, uh, yeah, it's quite a lot of gold leaf on there. Um, and then the way that we've got this exposed, I wanted it to look as if you'd ridden through like a gold, you know, like a gold cloud or a gold puddle. And to get like the element of speed without you actually moving. Um, that sounded quite good, didn't it? The idea is you can't really uh, effectively mask on top of gold leaf because it's so fragile. And this is 24K real gold leaf, it's not imitation. It's so fragile, you can't mask on top of it. And there is ways of lacquering it in and adding build to the bike and then masking on top of that. Uh, we don't really want to do that. And to get this effect, we used a liquid latex mask, which is what model makers and stuff use. So if you've got the little people painting the little figurines, like paint the eyes and then put a bit of this liquid latex over the top, it's pretty good stuff. And this is the, this is what you use for yeah, this, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, so previously we've used it on that to create like a brush effect. That's a really lovely bike actually. The frame isn't in here for that. So yeah, that was the idea. And when, whenever we did it with the base coat, um, we have these colours running through it, just look really effective. So I've always wanted to try it with gold and try and talk a regular customer into doing it. It's quite hard because it's quite a specific look. Mm. Um, but I think we've done it. I think we nailed it. It looks, I mean, it looks incredible. It's perfect like, for a trap bike. It, exactly. It's loud, it's bold. It is incredible. I was pretty buzzing when I walked in. I think I, think, I, think, I, think I just went, holy fuck, I think was my reaction. <laughs> Good. Oh, it's beautiful. And yeah, we're going to be sad to see it leave. And, and it's going to be really simple. It's going to have to have a gold chain, of course. And we're going to build it up next week, which I'm Happy days. I'm really excited about. And yeah. same with this one. So there's two bikes to build up next week, which is it's mega. But I mean, you've nailed it. 
Oh, thank you very much. You have nailed it. Thank you very much. It's nice to. Uh, Sammy's very good at painting. Well, we've got to, we've got to give Kaylee credit for this one. I can't take the credit for that. Kaylee's very good at painting yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah. If you are looking for someone to paint your lovely bicycle, I'm I'm 100 biased, but this is the place <laughs> to do it. I mean, if we just look around. Well, to be honest, we we uh, we're in the middle of having just got rid of a load of projects. There's not really a lot going on. I was gonna say right now, this is pretty empty for what yeah, I've seen yeah, in well, here. We're, we're obviously, a lot of our stuff that we do, the frames are made in Italy. We're just yeah. coming off the back of Italy's um, national sort of holiday period. So things slow down a little bit. We have just done a massive push to get rid of a load of stuff. So mm. this is actually a bit of a quiet period, giving us a bit of chance to get on the walls. Yeah. Um, and then leading back into a busy period again next month. December? December's a busy time. Oh God. Yeah, yeah. And there's Where more. Everyone's desperate to get stuff for the new riding season. And then, can we look at this one? We can do. This is stunning. Yes, it's more gold leaf actually. But this is a different type of gold leaf, yeah, right? So this is um, this is a variegated gold leaf, which has been put on the traditional way. Mm -hmm. um, it needs a bit of dusting off. So if you see any gold flecks on it, they're actually just it's a gold dust, mm -hmm. literally. Yes. Yeah, so lots of expensive dust on there. Yeah. Yeah. It's so wasteful, isn't it? Yeah, nice. No, you see the little, little Columbus stuff on there. It's beautiful. Pretty trick. This um, this hasn't got any lacquer on it, which is why it looks super dull and matte. But when this has got a clear coat on it, that really, really pops this colour. It's um, a Did Spain product, it's an American company. Mm. Um, so this will be like a super dark, almost black purple when it's got lacquer on it, but you take it out in the sun and it will have areas where it's just bright gold. That's it's beautiful. Really, really cool. Yeah, it's another really cool one. And this is one of the in house brands here Spoon and Windy Miller are the two in house brands and Gun Control is the paint studio. Yeah. And basically we're in the paint side and then through there is the bike side. That's right. I guess. Right. I don't know what's the other side of that door though, so. I bought some really nice mince pies, by the way, from Gales. Oh, Gales Bakery. Gales mince pies, right? That's, I've never had one. Neither have I. Well, I'm gonna do it. So this is where the spraying's done? This is where the spraying's done, or well, spraying and the baking. So it's a proper custom made uh, paint booth for bicycles. Smells good. Yeah, it's a bit of paint going on in there. Um, so it's all nicely lit, we've got filtered air in and out, and it's temperature controlled. So obviously as the temperature fluctuates throughout the year outside, it really doesn't matter. Paint has to be put on at a very specific temperature all the way through. Mm -hmm. If you want to get consistent results, this is the only place to do it. Um, and it's shut away from the outdoor atmosphere. So once you're out, you shut the door, it's a negative pressure inside, no dust or anything flying around. Any paint gets filtered out, push you straight out of the building. And then when you're done, you flick it over onto bake, leave it in there. Oh, so you bake them in here as well? Yeah, it's a spray bake. Yeah, spray bake oven. It's custom built. It's like a catering oven. Yeah. Uh, custom built catering oven that we're waiting to have installed, which you basically will then, throughout the day, you can rack all your frames up and then put them in the baking oven and just do one bake. So it's just yeah. more efficient. Yeah, yeah, makes uh, sense. It doesn't run on gas, it's only electric, whereas obviously this is burning, burning gas. How many frames do you reckon you paint a week? Because everything is always rolling, we very rarely will do a start to finish unless something's coming in, it's very basic. There will be, if, 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 the, if all of the hooks have got bikes on, and we should effectively be constantly working on, I try to do batches of five, five frames rolling. Um, but that, that can be, you could have three batches of five you're working on. So you do a bit on one, get it into clear coat, put it on the rack, let it dry, and leave it. And then that'll get sanded a week later and you're picking up another one. So you're yep. constantly, so okay. yeah. So yeah. How many do you reckon you've done this year? Oh God, that's only possible. I could, I could work it out. Hundreds? It'd be hundreds. It'll be hundreds. I hope it's over a hundred. Should be over a hundred. It's definitely over a hundred. If I include crash helmets in it, I did just do a batch of 52 crash helmets. So this is all old stuff. So if you don't throw anything away until it really needs throwing away, so you've got some, it might be some paint up there from your old bikes. Um, so yeah, this is all just old paint. So basically you never know the bike might well come back before the paint cycle is dry. We may need to reuse it. We can add it together. So if I've got, you know, there's obviously loads of blues. You can see what colors have been really popular, blue yeah. and purple. Um, before these colours dry off completely and we've got a blue bike to do, we'll just dump it all into one pot and use that as a sacrificial base coat to, to base the bike up with. So it's not wasted basically? Nothing, nothing goes to waste. It all gets used and we just do everything in super small parts. There's no point knocking up huge amounts of paint for everything. One of these parts. Mm. Oh, that's got a lot in it. That's right. I'll take one with less in it. One of these parts. <laughs> ha is that one bike? Uh, you could. Give or take? Give or take. So those pots. Completely depends. If you had a bike that had just been primed, so it's in grey primer and it needed to be purple, you would 
you wouldn't want to just um, you know just go banging purple straight over the grey. You mm. want a nice even base coat down first. So we might use you know older paint that we've got kicking around to sort of base it up and just kill that primer colour off. Mm. One of those pots, I reckon, generously you're probably using one and a half two for one bike. Um, so yeah, you, you, and when you're when you're lacquering, clear coating, you're probably going to be using. So for one frame, one fork, and one stem, it's just over one of those pots per session of lacquer. Yeah, I've got it down to pretty fine art. These are the guns, obviously. Yeah, there are a bunch of our spray guns there. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> it's as easy as that. You need to add air to it as well. Well, that's where you just get a tube. You get a tube, you blow in on one end, and then you just that's use the other end. That's what you do. That's all you do. That's you the energy efficient version of it. Throw paint at it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what we did do. We did throw, throw paint at it. We have done that. We have done that. We, have, we haven't actually got any evidence of it because every time I've done it in the oven, I've like covered the walls in paper. But yeah, there's been times when we've thrown paint and we've catapulted paint. There will hopefully be another raffle bike. Well, yeah. If we get the big boss to agree to it. <laughs> he did say to me yes on the phone. Okay, I'm staying out of it. I make things look pretty. I don't make decisions on stuff like that. That's up to big. Well, but we had an idea. <laughs> we we had an idea of what to do for it. There there has been an idea. Yeah, yeah. But we shall see. Yeah, no. we'll make. We're, I think we're going to make it happen. I'm going to. I bought mince pies as the thing to like sweeten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might be more than mince pies. We'll try. Yeah, but that was my start. That's my starting offer is mince pies. Okay. I've, I've got the frame and literally all the parts in the back of the car. Wow. Okay. And I'm just yeah. going to intentionally go. So when you leave, when you walk out that door, I'm shutting it and locking it. I'm going upstairs and hiding. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's you, fair. You can control discussions outside of the wall. I'll leave you to wrap the frames then. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Nice Thank one. you very much. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Wrap this stuff up. Yeah, I'm not. Um, Is it like that one's about to be stripped and that's sold? Yeah. That one's going off to Mallorca, but won't video really well because it's a huge, huge frame. We haven't got any lights. And. There's a little blue one in the fit studio, that's light. We're going to go look at a Land Rover bike. I don't know what a Land yeah, Rover... Yeah, really cool. What's so, a, what is a Land Rover bike? Well, the, the guy that's bought it wanted it to look a bit like the Series 1 Land Rover. Okay. So it's kind of... We painted it a vintage colour and we've got some really lovely French bar tape. It's made clever. Put nick wax on it every two minutes. And here it is. Yeah, but this is... This is a Land Rover cool. bike. <laughs> that's a different Land Rover. That's cool though, right? That is really cool. Look, it's just in this pool. Hello. 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 Chill out. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. Doggy, 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 doggy. She just barks at everything. Oh, we've got silk cages and little child's booted. It's beautiful. It's lovely, isn't it? Stainless steel XCR. Yeah, the dogs it's a lovely colour. Yeah. Ben's wheels. <laughs> ben made the wheels. Oh. What's her name? It's Alba. Much better than. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>